Hi everyone, I'm Andrew, I'm one of the conservation rangers here at Hobson's Bay City Council. Holding the cameras, Suzette, she's our other ranger. We're just down here and we're going to be looking at a plant this morning. A fairly common one you might see around in our park. It's one of our tufted grasses known as a poa. You can see a bit of a garden bed of them around about here at the moment. I'm going to talk about a couple of interesting adaptions or yeah, adaptations they've actually made to them to actually be able to handle the environment over here in Australia and certainly in the, the western basalt plain of Melbourne. Now you can actually see around me that some of the poas here are looking a little shabby aren't they? They're sort of ground off, not too good. And one of the reasons for that is that they haven't actually been burnt or cut. Um, you may know from sort of Aboriginal history that many years ago the Aboriginal Australians used to always burn our grasslands. They used to burn it so that all the, the reptiles, the skinks, the lizards, insects and things like that would all try and run away and they'd be trapped at the other end of the fire. In this day and age you actually even find things like um, black kites are a good example where if you see a bushfire around, you'll often see black kites flying around and they're hanging around the edges of the fire waiting for these lizards and snakes and things to come out so they can pick them off. So what this tail has been do doing here is it's adapted to be able to get used to these fires. They're constantly being burnt. So what you can see in front of me here is so once you look at the big ones here, or the old sort of better ones, you can see this few at the front here. These are a few that I've burnt off a couple of weeks ago, only about two weeks ago. And you can already see this new growth coming back. And give this a few more weeks, maybe even by the end of this sort of winter growing season, well there's some nice fresh green looking colours here. Now I could also have actually got a brush cutter out or a lawnmower and cut the grasses as well, that's always another angle. And certainly at home, you know, I wouldn't be suggesting you go and burn all your grasses, but at home, you certainly just would give them a haircut. Unfortunately for us, is that we never think of native plants as actually needing a cut. Mum and Dad will go out and cut the grass or cut the lawn, but they won't cut these. So maybe next time, you know, Mum and Dad have got the lawn mower out, ask them perhaps they'd cut their native grasses if you've got any of them. And they'll give them a new sort of shot of life, if you like, and regrow again. Now the other thing I did want to show you about these powers today, well, they've actually done another adaption they've done to be able to look or survive in this drier weather. Is that, well, that's a bit hard to tell on the camera here at the moment is, their leaves actually roll up into like a cylinder or cylindrical. Now, the reason why they do that is quite smart. Now, because there isn't a lot of rain, certainly over here in the Western Basalt Plain, the plant wants to try and avoid losing water because it can't just have a drink whenever it wants. Now, all leaves have these things called stomata or pores in them, and that actually allows the moisture to leave the plant. Now, if the plant doesn't want to lose the moisture, if it wants to stay nice and, you know, moist and help it to grow well, then what this poa has actually done is it's turned its leaf into like a, into a ball, if you like, rolled it up. These stomata or pores, they're in the top of the leaf. So if you can picture the leaf being rolled up so all of a sudden the top of it is actually on the inside so when this plant releases its moisture through those holes it actually gets trapped inside the leaf there making a bit like a little you know hothouse or glass house you might have at home very humid very moist and really really good conditions for it to grow so if ever you do wonder how in the world do these plants survive in areas like this this is one way they actually do it really smart way of adapting themselves to our environment. That's it from me today. Hopefully we'll see you around in one of our parks sometime soon. Bye.